I'm Saigon Sam. It's October 23rd, 2011. I'm here in Bangkok, and along with most of the residents, I'm waiting to see what kind of damage the floods may bring as they storm down from up north, potentially overflowing canals and penetrating dams as they come. But there's a part of the story that I think is not being reported in the news, at least not very well, and it deserves substantial attention. That's why I've made this video. The problem is, it appears that the water, and to some extent the food supply chain, is breaking down. Specifically, I've heard that water processing plants have had a shortage of plastic. Uh, indeed, a lot of the plastic plants are probably inundated by water in the industrial parks up north. The water plants themselves, to some extent, may also be inundated. And obviously, it's very hard for employees to show up to work under the circumstances. To make matters worse, Transportation routes into Bangkok are highly disrupted, whether it's by floodwaters or by people who have decided to park their cars two and three cars deep along the highways in an effort to protect their personal property to the detriment of this great city's transportation networks. I'm not sure how long this bottled water situation can sustain itself without having social repercussions. I'm led to believe that the locals must either be drinking the bottled water they stocked up on several days ago, or they're boiling tap water to survive, neither of which is a particularly sustainable pursuit. I will say that uh, as of today, I measured the water quality coming out of the tap, and it's normal as far as conductivity is concerned at just over 200 microsiemens. So far, so good to the Metropolitan Water Works Authority. I do hope they can keep up this defense against the onslaught of toxic waters coming down from the north. But it's not an easy task, especially considering that the canals are now overflowing in some cases, and a few days ago the Rangsit Dam apparently ruptured, flooding a lot of the area in the north of Bangkok. Thus far, most of Bangkok itself is still dry, but we don't know if that can last. Every day it seems we hear conflicting things from various, various authorities. Nature itself will make the truth obvious eventually, but of course we have to prepare ahead of time. To that end, personally, what have I done? I've stockpiled plenty of water, and I would advise if you find yourself in a similar situation in the future, that if possible, you have an atmospheric water condenser on hand, such as the high flux dragonfly that I talked about a couple of videos ago. Apart from that, I bought plenty of healthy fats that don't require refrigeration, such as olive oil and coconut milk. As far as protein and micronutrients are concerned, I've stockpiled dried, fortified children's milk powder. Not at all something I find appetizing, but under the circumstances, in the absence of refrigeration, I think it'll keep me alive for a while. And finally, I've bought dried bread and oats in order to provide uh, some fibrous matter uh, in order to keep myself healthy uh, in the event that I have to eat all of this distasteful stuff and sit inside this place here for days, weeks, who knows. And by the way, there's another concern I have, which is, you know, if the supply chain continues to degenerate, how long is it going to be before we see looting or other civil disruptions? I shudder to think what that would mean in a city of 10 million people, mostly poor, where the roads leading out are not particularly functional. So, I have endeavored to keep my noise and light emissions as low as possible under the circumstances. However, I'm not going to hide like a chicken. I've put myself on a list to volunteer to help people and animals where needed. Oddly enough, though, after a day, I haven't been called. So I called my Thai friend to ask why this could be. She explained, she hadn't been called either, that basically it seems to be an artifact of the reality on the street, which is that Thais are certainly some of the most generous people you can find, but uh, it's a matter of the short supply of, of motorized boats, of bottled water, and in some cases dried food. So while there are plenty of volunteers, there aren't necessarily the supplies and the tools needed to make a difference. And this is uh, certainly of serious concern to people in Ayutthaya province and elsewhere who are still waiting on their roofs to be rescued, sometimes holding their animals in their arms. It's a very difficult situation. In other news, uh, in the grocery stores today, it was obvious to me that the food supply chain is also starting to crack, particularly regarding food that's obtained from 
far away, for instance, the cooler regions where they can grow broccoli and cruciferous vegetables. Broccoli, for one, is in short supply. Potatoes, I couldn't find any. Eggs, also couldn't find any, because obviously they're very nutritious and they pretty much keep without refrigeration. So it's with some trepidation that I report all this to you tonight, but I think it's important because I don't think the media has put enough attention to the rapidly decaying supply chain into Bangkok. Now, the airport, Savarnabhum Airport, still seems to be functional and, and dry as far as I know. So I would imagine that if you're in the business of supplying motorized boats or dried food or certainly bottled water, that you ought to get in touch with the right authorities or a grocery store and see if you can do business. I think it would greatly help the country and I'm sure you'd find a market here. But there's not much time to act. Talk to you later.